Elite is already a beautifully looking game, but today I'm going to show you some of the settings you can change to try and make your game look even better. And I'm also going to show you how you can dive into the game files itself and edit those to go beyond the settings that are available to you in the game. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Elite Dangerous without with Astronomy. Today we're going to keep diving into some of the settings of the game and we're going to focus on the graphical settings. And the first thing I want to talk about is that we're going to options and graphics is the display options in here. Now, this is just the uh, resolution and frame rate of the game. And this is all this really works on. First of all, of course, you should make absolutely sure that this resolution here matches the resolution of your monitor. Um, and if you're ever in doubt why, where you can see your monitor resolution. You just come out here to your desktop, you go in, click display settings, and then go down here to advanced display settings. And here you can see information about your display. So you can see my main display here. Um, it's a 1440p and it is running at 144 hertz. It's saying 33 hertz, 43 hertz here, but it's a 144 hertz uh, panel. Um, so yeah, so this is where you get that information. So back in the game, make sure that the resolution of the game is running and matching your monitor. And I would also recommend that you go into your frame rate limit here and match that to your monitor. Now I keep it lower than my monitor because I'm recording at the same time. So I want the game to refresh at the same, um, the same rate as my recording is. That's why I've, I've kept mine a little bit. The refresh rate here um, says that it says, it says here, when using a head-mount display, that's a VR headset, this option applies to the monitor window and not the VR output. So that means if you're in VR, you can pretty much lower this down to as low as it will go. And that will ensure that the game that you're seeing on the screen itself um, is not refreshing that fast, giving you more power to run your VR headset. Um, if you have a very, very high refresh monitor, um, I would actually consider just dropping it from 144 to 120 hertz if I had problems keeping my, uh, if I was capped on some of the other settings that we're going to talk about in a bit, just to try and free up some of the um, um, some of the resources on my graphics card. Because when it comes to graphic optimizations, it's not just about cranking up the the settings that makes the game look good. Because it doesn't matter if your game looks pretty, but it's a slideshow and you're only getting five frames a second. So it's all about trying to get the game looking as good as possible while still pushing out as many frames per second as you possibly can. So that's also going to be a theme that we're going to see when we're going to dive into some of the other settings later. And then we're going to try to get get a little bit more power out of our graphics card or not make it spend time on something that maybe not affect the game as much. So I'm going to keep it here at 60 just to give me a nice headroom so I can, uh, can record and so that it, uh, it matches the recording that I'm doing right now. Next, I want to dive into some of the quality settings here. And there's a lot of very interesting settings out here you could go into and we're going to go through some of them I'm not going to go into deep uh, into into a lot of detail with all of them but one that i want to highlight in this is the super sampling here now if you are playing in vr you would probably have noticed that text can be a little difficult to read uh, in vr sometimes and one way to um to get around that problem is to increase your super sampling now what this basically is is let's say that your game is running at let's find my quality here is running at about two and a half thousand times 1500 ish just to make uh, round numbers it's easy to calculate with two and a half thousand times 1500 um pixels right if i put my super sampling up to oh, where is it to let's say times two that means that it's now going to be twice in both directions so that's now going to be five thousand times three thousand that is going to not just double, but quadruple the number of pixels that needs to be um, that be computed. So keep in mind when you do this, that you get a diminishing return for the higher you go, because it's going up as the, um, as the super sampling squared, because you increase it in both directions. So when you increase your super, or, uh, fiddle with your super sampling, be a little careful here, because remember that going up just one step, can maybe be beneficial to you, but if you go up um, to two, it will begin to be really, really taxing on your graphics card, and you can begin to uh, to to lose some uh, some frames. So, again, um, try it out and uh, maybe not pull it up too high just to start with. Now, the next thing I want to try to highlight here is actually 
how well this is split up. You can see much of it is like, okay, we have the galaxy map separate here. We have all the terrain of the planets. We have jet cones as a separate thing for some reason. Um, and volumetric effects are also, there's a lot of different settings and that's actually uh, quite nice. So you can go, if you have specific areas of the game, let's say you always get lag every time you are on a planet, you could go and you could just uh, fiddle with the changes that has to do with the terrain on planets. So you don't have to drop the texture quality on a, like everywhere, you can just only drop it on the planet. So if you have issues there, so it all depends on the, on your system. So you have, um, have an opportunity to, to split it out. It's actually quite nice. Now, if for instance, you have problems with, on planets, what I would recommend is that the, uh, the terrain material quality and sample quality, drop those um, a little bit. You don't have to run those at, at ultra. There's also the volumetric effects down here. This is stuff like, um, um, gas clouds and dust in, uh, in planet rings and, and, and stuff like that. And this often takes a lot of computing power as well. So it can be, a, if you have problems in planet rings, it can maybe be a good idea to consider dropping the volumetric effects a little bit. Then, um, gas clouds and stuff like that might not look as pretty as they did before, but it, again, it's going to give you a little bit extra, um, extra headroom to spend where it really matters. Some of the settings that I would really recommend that you try to, to crank up is especially something like the shadow quality, the bloom and texture quality. These three up here would really change the game and the feel for the game. I'm just going to show you, um, show you the difference here. Right now I have bloom set to high, which is the highest setting. So if we go back into the game here, um, you can notice the crate here has these two lights on, um, actually shining right towards us right now on the, on the frame holding the windows in place. And we can see there's like a little bit of lens flare coming out of these and it looks like they are slightly overexposed from the camera recording this. So, and uh, if we go into the settings again, go into options, go into graphics, go into quality and we take the bloom, bloom there, it'll turn it off completely. Now look what happens to these lights here. That lens flare that kind of obscured the middle line is, is now kind of gone. I'll try to do a split screen here so you can see the two next to each other. It, there is quite a, a noticeable difference. And while we're in here, notice here, because I have my, the start right above me, and it's uh, the frame is now casting shadows on, um, on my panel here in front of me. And of course, if I go into options, and I'm going to turn, I'm going to turn bloom back on, and we're going to take shadow quality, just turn it off, and the shadows are now completely gone. So I would definitely not recommend that you turn shadows off, because it, it just adds so much to the game. Having those shadows uh, move around and... It makes the game feel a lot more realistic. Um, we can try just for fun here to put shadow quality to low. And we can see if we get a grainy shadow, we should do, I guess. Yeah, you can see the shadows are a little bit rough around the edge. And there's a, you can see how uh, how you can see the pixels move down when I'm turning here very slowly. I hope it comes up here on, on the recording. But at least when I'm looking at it right now, I can kind of see the individual rows of pixels in the shadows, even though they are quite blurred out. Um, and it doesn't look... Uh, it doesn't look very good. So this is some of the settings I would really recommend that you uh, that you try and push up. And uh, when you get a little bit extra, that is, again, take the quality, shadow, and uh, and bloom. I also quickly want to mention anti-aliasing. This is, again, something that uses a ton of computing power and that might not give you that much in terms of um, how, how well the game looks. So you can try and push this down. I've actually kept mine. It does turn it off completely. I just have it to uh, FXAA. And, and just get a little bit of it, but I don't want to spend too much. And it, again, this is because this is a balancing act for me, because again, when recording, especially when streaming, is it's taking a lot of strain on um, um, on the computer. So that's why I'm trying to keep anti-aliasing um, a little bit lower than, uh, than it, 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 po it possibly could be if I was running the game without recording. So, and again, there's a lot of other ones that, that can be interesting here. This one I want to mention as well, the um, um, ambient uh, occlusion. I think it's pronounced like that. That is the atmospheric effects of planets. So if you want to go out, you want to take like extremely um, well looking images of planets and like the light from stars coming through the atmosphere and you get this like beautiful, beautiful effects. Then this is the setting for you. Then crank that up there and you will have planets atmospheres look a lot better um, when that is on. So those are some of the settings you can change in game. But now we're going to dive into the game files themselves and see how we can go beyond what's available to you in the game. But before we do that, I just quickly want to ask you guys to consider subscribing to the channel. If you want more detailed guides like this, or you want the latest news about the game, 
then this is definitely the place for you, so go down and, uh, and hit that subscribe button. So to get access to these game files, first of all, we have to close the game, because these are loaded on boot up, so uh, let's get the game closed. So these files are, first we need to go and find your Steam install location. I've installed this on my secondary drive, so that would be on the D drive and under programs. And I have my Steam folder, I have my Steam apps, I have the common folder, we have Elite Dangerous, because I'll put the link down there in, uh, in the description. In the Elite folder, we're going to go into Products, then we're going to go into Elite Dangerous 64. And in here, you will find an XML file that's called graphicsconfigurations.xml. And the first thing you do is you copy this file and you call it something else. I have one here that I call default. That is my backup. That means if we end up messing something up in this file and we're not able to restore it or undo it, you delete the file, you take a copy of your default and you remove the underscore default or whatever you called it. And you're back in action. You don't have to completely reinstall the game. So I cannot stress how important it is to um to back up this file before you begin but once you've got a backup you're just gonna whoops come here open up in your favorite editor in my case i'm gonna use notepad plus plus and we're gonna look for first of all we're gonna have a look at the galaxy background so i'm just gonna go find look for galaxy background one word boom and here we have an xml node and what we can see here is that the galaxy background quality low has a texture resolution of 512 times 512 pixels. So that means whenever you jump into a system, what happens as part of the rich space animation is it it uh, it renders the galaxy background around you. And that's just a squared image um, that's, of course, computed in a resolution. Now, if you have this setting set to low, it's going to be 512 times 512. Medium is going to be, yeah, 10 to 24 or 20. 48 at high, but there's nothing preventing us from going beyond this. Now, what we could try to do here is, I mean, this is not even the width of my monitor. I mean, I could have this whole image on my monitor at full resolution, um, no problems at all. And since I'm not going to be able to see the whole sky at the same time, or maybe I will be able to see a third, I could probably benefit from taking this up or not. Let's say we're just going to double it, go... 496 and I could just put this everywhere so I'm absolutely sure that it is set correctly and then we can save this and we can now load back into the game and we would have a uh, um, have a higher resolution background the galaxy is just rendered at a higher uh, higher quality keep in mind though that that means that your which space jumps is going to take longer because now it needs to render a bigger picture but uh, let's just for fun let's try to uh, to go into the game and see if we can actually see the difference Okay, so when I increased the resolution, it didn't, I mean, I could see the difference, but it didn't really show up that well on the recording as, uh, as I've hoped. So what I've done instead to, to try and showcase this to you is I wanted to show you what would happen if you drop this down like way low. So I dropped down the resolution to only 128 by 128. <laughs> and I'm going to put up like a side by side image here so we can see the difference what happens when you lower this resolution down um, way, way low. And you can clearly see now the the background galaxy looks a lot more washed out than it did before. You don't have all those details in the clouds you do before. Now, you might like that that look. And again, this is a matter of taste of, as, as with this with anything. But just know that you can go in there and you can uh, and you can change those, uh, those settings in there. But the fun doesn't stop there. Now, this is a big file. I mean, uh, this, this XML file is what, around 2,000 something? Almost, yeah, 1,900 <laughs> exactly lines. It's, it's a big big file. This is just graphics, so you can spend days on this. Here we have the Galaxy map, for instance, which was the one I was actually looking for. It's quite nice. Um, we have the Galaxy map. We have some FX settings here. We have a ton of, uh, of setting debris. You can scroll through this and you, surface rocks. So here you have just a block that, that does surface rocks. Um, there's a ton of stuff and you can pretty much scroll through this yourself and you can sit, you can tweak this. But I just want to highlight, where did it go? Galaxy map. Here we have the galaxy map node, which we have here. We have it on the high setting. Because there's a lot of very interesting things here. For instance, we have the nebula count here. Um, nebula in background count, which is set to 40. Uh, interesting. We have the low-risk nebula count. We have the high-risk nebula count. We have 
if you put this to like 4,000, it's not like the sky is going to be filled with 4,000 nebulas. I mean, there is only a certain number of nebulas in the game. But I think this is just a limit to how many nebulas it's going to render in the background image. So let's say, for instance, that you are in an area with a lot of nebulas around you, more than 40. Then it would take, as I understand it, the 40 closest nebulas and render those in the image, and the rest is just not going to be visible. So if you were to increase this, you would then, if you hit that limit, be able to see more. So for instance, something like the high-res nebula count, um, I guess that depends how many they would do in a in ton of detail. And I guess the reason why this is always set to one is because they expect you only to be close to one nebula. So if you want to increase your nebula, we could go and we could say, okay, you know what? Where did my mouse go? It doesn't matter. Um, we can increase that to five first. So now we can have more high resolution nebulas. That's how I understand this to work. And same here, we have the dimensions of, of, of what is the... Um, the, the image, the nebula image that they're going to overlay on the background rendered image. What is the resolution here? We have the low resolution ones here. We have the high resolution one here, which, of course, as we increase the double that, we might also want to uh, to double this as well. So it kind of scales with our um, with our galaxy map, which we did uh, not galaxy map the uh, your galaxy background we did before. Um, high res sample comes not exactly sure. Um, what this is, but something like uh, star instance count, this is how many stars there are in the night sky. So again, same thing, it will then take the um, maximum, I think 4,000 nearest star, and they will then plot those as single dots on the image. And we can then increase that, let's just, I don't know, put, uh, let's say we go 8,000 there instead. And a very interesting one is the local dust brightness, and this is set to zero right here. I just want to quickly go in and have a look so you can see what these local dust things are that, the, that this refers to. So we are back again. Okay, so you can see here when we scroll out a little bit, you can see these all these like dusk brownish dust cloud clouds that are like floating around here. Those are the one that refers to as local dust. You can see how they are, if I scroll out, you can see how they are rendered as I move around. So they're only local uh, rendered around me. And they move, or they're gonna be completely gone if you move far enough away. And the brightness of these is when you increase that, just makes them more prominent. So let's try and go out and do that. So local dust brightness, let's just go a little bit overkill here and let's increase that to five. That's way overkill. I mean, even if you go up just by 0 0.1, 0 0.2, it's already very noticeable. So going up to five is absolutely overkill. Um, but we're gonna do it anyway. And there you go. As I said, complete overkill. These clouds are now everywhere. Look at that. <laughs> they are very, very prominent, and you can even see some cases where we actually get some graphics glitches with the colors. Um, and I'm actually getting some uh, some weird stutters here when I do this, because again, we went way overboard on this. So you, again, we're going to try and, and adjust that just a little bit, so maybe it's it's not that prominent. But this was just to, to show the effect of what they actually do, and I guess that uh, that is mission complete. So here we have a much more manageable 0 0.8 local dust brightness. As you can see, we now get these huge brown clouds. It actually looks okay. And you can tweak that. If, I mean, this is maybe a little bit too overkill for, me, for my taste still. Um, but of course, you can, you, can, you can fiddle around with this yourself until you get something, uh, something that you like. And... I was actually wondering what happens. What would happen if you put that to negative? Like, what would happen if you try to remove these clouds altogether? And and I'm just going to show you what happens. And here you have it. This is what happens if you go negative. So, uh, well, the game is still running, but yeah, yeah, no, no. So, but again, it it's not like you're going to destroy your game completely. Now, it's, it's it's not the end of the world. All we now do is go back to our file. And, and I've had this a million times where I tried to tweak something and then it just crashed and didn't work. I've even had the game hard crash on launch. Um, so just go back and tweak your settings again. Go back to your settings you had before. And of course, this is why we keep our backup file. And here we have something that I think is maybe a little bit more of what you would maybe look for. This is a 0.1 increase on the local dust brightness. And I did a um, 1.2 on the galaxy brightness. So I increased the, the uh, light coming from the galaxy core a little bit. And I increased the number of stars in the sky and stuff like that. 
Um, and it looks it looks okay. Um, it's not a huge noticeable. I'm not too into those really extravagant ones, but you can do some very extravagant stuff, and you could, as I said, you could dive a lot more into this. Now, Neuroflux over on Reddit did a post about two years ago where, um, and he did a file where he's been tweaking that thing a lot. I'm gonna try to uh, see if I can upload that file. So uh, I actually, you know what? I think it actually linked on the form thread itself. So I might just actually link. Oh yeah, so it is linked on the form thread. So you know what? I'm just gonna link to that form thread so you can go or you can read up about it on yourself. Um, the reason why I wanted to show this last one with the uh, with the clouds is because I think that's overdone a little bit in his uh, is this file. So I wanted to go back and dial that back a little bit. But he's done some amazing work on getting the lighting to poop to pop a little bit more in the game. Um, and yeah, generally just go in and try that uh, try that thing. Have a look. I've got a link to it in uh, in the description. But anyway, I really hope that you found today's video uh, informative and useful. If you did, remember to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel. And until next time, I will see you guys in space.